where we perform some basic uh, descriptive statistics like preparation of uh, frequencies, cost tabulations, and the charts here. Okay. In order to perform descriptive statistics or any other basic statistics, we one has to go to analyze descriptive statistics. I'm simply taking frequencies. Okay. I want to understand uh, how many respondents are there in my data set, how many people belongs to male category, I mean, gender wise, age wise, you know, stream wise. So you can choose as per your choice. Okay. I'm taking right now. gender of the simultaneously can take more than one variable also okay what i'm doing i'm just putting my cursor here after putting my cursor here click on the shift button just press shift button and at a time you can select three four items okay number of items or you can simply select all the items as well once you select it just click on this particular arrow button it will right side will take in all the variables whatever you want to do it okay let's click on statistics Just click on mean if you want to choose any of the mode. If you want to see minimum, maximum. Okay. And if you want to pay the prepare any charts. I've taken all the variables to right side. I've taken all the variables to right side. Okay, then you can go to statistics. If you simply click on a uh, mode, or uh, you know, you can just perform a mean mode, minimum maximum, just understand what kind of data we have it. Just click on continue. And if you want to prepare any kind of charts, we are going to talk specifically about charts later on. But for the sake of understanding uh, frequencies point of view, you can choose any of the charts, percentages, continue. Now, okay. Can you able to see here data? We have outputs as we have selected number of uh, yes, around nearly, nearly four. I think someone was telling that they're not able to see output. Now you're able to see output window, output window. Yes, I can. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Now, so we have first table basically providing brief description of the entire table that we have selected it. Like we have selected five variables, gender, age of the respondent, stream, and it's providing, uh, there are 50 responses. And it's also showing uh, what are the missing values we have. For this particular five variables, we don't have any missing values. Okay. So 100% uh, we got responses, 50 respondents, they answered probably for this particular five questions. Next one, gender. Out of 50 responses, we have around 27 belongs to male category, 23%. Sorry. If you're looking at percentage wise, I suggest you all to take always percentage wise, wise because uh, if you are talking, you are interpreting your results in the, in the percentages as a third person, you usually can understand it. Okay. As a research scholar, as you are the person collecting data, you know what is out of 50, 27 means what, 23% means what. But if you can put it in terms of Percentage average, people can understand easily data. Then take the percentage column. Then similarly, you can see that we have, I can, there are uh, 54 belongs to male category, but six belongs to male category. Similarly, we have age wise. Okay. Then we have stream wise like BA, BCOM, BSC. This is all about brick or uh, frequency tables. Okay. Now we have SSC intermediate degree and uh, ICT competency test, okay. And we also created charts. I'm not specifically talking about charts. I'm going to discuss how to prepare the chart, okay. This is right now only along the frequencies point of view. Now, next, after preparing frequencies, I just want to prepare cross tabulation. I hope, is it clear to all how to prepare uh, frequencies? Just go to analyze, descriptive statistics. As you already selected, if you want to see any of these stuff, you can see it. Otherwise, what you can do is you can just unclick it. Okay. Just click on display frequency tables. Okay. 
If we don't want to see minimum maximum range and all, we can simply uh, after putting left to right variables, there's an option called display frequency table. Display frequency table. If we don't want to use any of the stuff, percentiles, main, median, all the stuff, okay? This the display frequency simply presents the data. Now, as you see on your output window, one is the output, the results we got it. Left side, you can see that the log, the output log. Now, for example, you are having data about uh, five, uh, around 50 variables, and you are continuously uh, performing all the variables statistics. Okay. And you can see that it is going to be like this pages, 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 pages. And all of a sudden, you want to see one of the variable view data result. Now, what you can do, you can go to the left side. You can go to top. This is you can trace a particular table, a particular chart, a particular variable point of view. Okay. That is the best part of this particular window option. Okay. I hope uh, is it clear what I'm saying here. In this particular dialog, this particular output window, we have two options. One is the as I'm moving cursor, this is output. The charts, tables, graphs. On the left hand side, we have log. This means number of commands that we have performed, number of statistics we have performed. Okay. Now, after performing so many statistics, if you want if you like to see a particular table, particular chart, instead of going like this, you know, pages, 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 you can go to log box, log book. You can click on a particular variable, you know, particular box. Easily you can trace it. Okay. Now, how to prepare cross translation? Now, I don't want to simply prepare, you know, uh, there are 50 respondents, uh, 27 belongs to male, 23 belongs to female. But I want to see out of this particular 27, how many people having uh, good, how many people belongs to PhD, or how many people having uh, high, low competency on uh, ICT, like information communication technology, or how many people belongs to BSW, what are the data, what are the data mindset that we have it, however you want it, you can look at it. For example, just go to analyze, descriptive statistics, there's an option called cross tabs, there's an option called cross tab, I hope you are able to see the data, you are able to see that option, cross tabulation. Anyone? Yes? Of course. Yeah. Yes, sir. Now, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Now, the moment I click on the cross tabs, you can see the new progress, new window. There is cross tab window. Now, I'm choosing the variables like gender. You can choose whether it's rows or columns. There was no any problem. Only in regression, you need to talk about which is independent variable, which is independent variable, okay? Now, rows and columns, as per your choice, you can choose. I'm taking... Where do we get this cross tabs? Go to Analyze. Descriptive Statistics. There is a right side, if you go, you can see that cross tab. Okay? Can you able to see, madam? Yes, sir. Yeah. Now I'm taking two variables, okay, uh, maybe two or three variables, so as per your choice, you can choose. I'm taking gender, one variable. I want to understand out of 50 respondents, out of this many male categories, is there any difference in terms of their ICT competencies, okay? So I'm taking second variable as uh, information and communication technology competencies, okay? ICT skills. Now, let's go to statistics, uh, right side, so you can see that. Statistics. Whenever you want to perform chi square correlation, we are going to come here. Right now, we are not going to do that chi square test. Okay. Then we don't need to use any of these stuff like cells. If you want to put it, when it comes to using chi square test, we are going to use all the stuff. If you want to put it in percentages, you can use it. Otherwise, right now, I'm not going to touch upon any of the aspect. Okay. After shifting the variables from left to right side, Click on OK. Now you can see my cross tabulation. For every uh, command, it will perform two tables. One is basic summary, 
case summary. Second one, actual uh, data that we are going to come at. For example, gender of the respondent and ICT and competences on technology. See, uh, the title I'm getting here, the, this is the way I have given in my label here. ICT competence in the technology, gender of the respondent. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the session, how the label should reflect in your output. Accordingly, you have to type your label. While typing in the name, you're not getting space, there's no possibility to type, but label is the only place where you can type exactly how uh, your output will reflect. Okay, here, gender of the respondent and ICT of the competences here. So I'm taking two variables. We have 50 responses. And out of 50, if you look at the ICT skills set, we have 31% uh, having low ICT skills and average nine, nine people and uh, high 10 people. Means you can see that majority of the respondents not having much uh, high ICT skills. Means majority, nearly 60% of the respondents, 62% of the respondents having low ICT competencies on technology. So you can able to interpret the your data. As I mentioned it, as always, you can be able to take in the form of percentages. If you want to take in the form of percentages, as I have shown you earlier, there's an option called percentages. When you want to only take row-wise, when you want to take column-wise, when you want to take total-wise. So as per your choice, you can take percentages. Now we can see the difference here. It will show you know, percentages. Okay. Now, I taking, as I have taken for uh, all the rows, columns, total is showing names. The best way is to do that. Go to cross tab, cell, I'll put total. Now I got the total percentage. Easily one can able to analyze it, your data. Okay. So this is how we can able to create cross tabulations. Uh, instead of preparing simple uh, frequencies, if you can able to prepare cross tabulations, it will give you more interpretation, more insights to the readers. Okay. Instead of simply saying that there are uh, this many people belong to male category, male category, within that, how many people belong? How many people have highest competencies, lowest competency, average competency? You can take any data. Are you finding any difficulty preparing cross tabulations and uh, single frequency? No, sir. Are able to understand, sir. Okay. Okay. Good. okay. Yes, please. Uh, sir, can you show us cost tabulation with multiple variables? Like you have taken gender and then the ICT one, right? So can we just do with multiple variables, please? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Go to analyze just same way, madam. Okay, just go to analyze descriptors, cross tabulation. Yeah. Now, here along with the gender, along with the uh, ICT, I also want to see this screen diagrams, or maybe I want to see the screen. Yeah, <clears throat> as per the choice, I can put in rows and put in columns. Okay. okay. Now we can see here. Here how a stream of the respondents. And gender wise respondents. We have created one. Okay, sir, understood. So yeah. whenever we are going to do the multiple variable cross tab, so we need to just put it in our row section, right? No, your choice, your choice. I okay. mentioned it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. How you should prepare your table in your part. Okay. That okay. we can able to make it out. Understood. For example, now I am putting is a layer. Okay. There is layer one. Now you can see the three variables I have chosen single table. I have chosen BA, gender, and ICT. Earlier, what we did, we have prepared uh, gender and ICT and the stream and ICT. Now here, 
I'm taking gender and stream wise as well as ICT skill in the single variable. So here I have taken both in two variables, multiple variables I have chosen. Okay, layer. There is an option called there is an option called layer. If you take the proper option, you can go to. Okay, sir. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, just once it is clear, we'll start talking about how to prepare uh, graphs. Yeah. Here in graphs, as I mentioned, there are two options: one is chart builder, second is legacy dialogs. Okay. Now, let's try both. Okay. Go to chart builder. I hope you're able to see that. I'm going to this uh, legacy dialogues. Okay, here this time there are a number of options we have: bar chart, line chart, area chart, pie chart, box plots. Okay, now for example, we'll take one or two charts. Like for example, we have scatter dot scatter plot. Scatter plot. Or whenever you want to see whether, for example, one of the tests like regression or correlation. When you talk about correlation, it basically talks about if one variable is increasing it, whether the second variable is increasing or decreasing. If there is a is there a positive relationship or negative relationship? For example, price of a product is increasing, whether demand is increasing or decreasing. Okay. Similarly, in our data set, we have exams like knowledge score on calcium and calcium intake. If you look at our data, Knowledge score. We are talking about knowledge score on calcium. Means we have conducted test on uh, calcium. The people they are kind of understanding they are hanging about calcium, and those are hanging highest knowledge. For example, for fifty marks test, okay, if somebody got around forty eight, means the person is hanging highest knowledge in the about you know, calcium, okay. The person who got around ten, fifteen, twenty means you can understand that uh, medium score or low score if they have it. And the person who is having highest knowledge, I want to know what is his calories of intake per day, how much calcium he or she is taking per day. So I want to see is there any relationship between knowledge score and calcium intake. Is it clear first point? Yes, sir. Yeah. Now I want to see what kind of relation, whether yes, it is sir. positive relation or negative relation. If it is positive relation, or, and what no, this is linearly how it is distributed, right? Now, in order to understand this particular data, I'm going to look at prepare, uh, one of the options preparing scatter plot. Okay. Just go to graphs. There's an option called legacy dialogues. In that we have scatter dot, scatter or dot. Okay. This is called scatter plot. In that, please select a uh, first one. There is simple scatter. Simple scatter, first one. This is simple scatter. Define. Now here, somebody is talking about independent variable, dependent variable. Now, when it comes to correlation, we don't need to worry about which is independent, which is dependent. Whereas when it comes to regression, there we are going to start talking about independent variable, dependent variable here. For example, here, I'm talking about our x-axis, there is a knowledge score. There is a knowledge score here. We have a knowledge score is going to be on x-axis. There is going to be independent variable. And calcium intake is a dependent variable. I'm going to keep it on by axis. Are you there with me so far? Yes, so go to the next. Yeah. Yes, now sir, once, sir. One, once we enter the data in the x-axis and y-axis, just if you want to give any kind of titles, subtitles, line one, line two, just you can Google that. And if you want to see any options, just click on continue. After giving uh, variables here, just click OK. Now you can see graphical representation of your data. OK. Now, how to understand this particular data? 
how to understand this particular data. Now, the person who is having a knowledge score, highest cursor is starting from here to here. This is the diagonal line. This is the diagonal line. You can see that the person has knowledge score is increasing it. The calculation intake is also increasing it. As you can see, x axis knowledge score increasing from 0 to 50. The last highest score was 48. Okay. Now, knowledge score is 48. This calcium intake is also somewhere close to 99.98. There are two outlays. There are above 100 also we have. There are people who are having a calcium intake per day, milligrams. Okay. That also, but that person also having an average score is 40. Is having a score of score around 40. Now, this is one way. Second point here is that, sir, exactly how to understand. Somebody can ask me, sir, I'm not able to interpret this particular data. Thing is, as knowledge score increasing it, you can see calcium score increasing means you're not able to see any data left side on top, right side at the bottom. Means there's a line here. There's a diagonal line. For example, let me go back to this screen, double click on this. Double click on this particular one. I request all of you to please double click on the chart. Now you can see new pop-up window, chart edited. Now yes. there's option called there's option called properties here. Showing it again. Now what I'm doing is I want to understand how diagonal line is there. So in order to understand diagonal line, just click on this particular box. You can able to see that line here. And you can see that your that data is somewhere scattered around the diagonal line, right? Somewhere, you know, this is a diagonal line and your data is scattered almost up and down of this particular diagonal line, right? I hope you're able to see the difference. Yeah. Now, it depends on availability of time. You know, you can keep exploring all the variables here, whether you want to increase the sort size, whether you want to make any changes in the color, uh, this apply here, okay? Whether you want to make any changes in the border, whether you want to make any changes in the title, you know. Just a lot of options we have it. You can keep uh, exploring this particular window and you can see that uh, what are other editions we can make it out. Chart editor. Now, for example, I have completed this particular window. Let me do this. Yeah. Now I want to take it, this particular chart to my Word document or maybe any of the uh, table. What I'm going to do is, I'm just going to select it. It is giving different options. Copy as image. Go to your Word document. Okay. And if you want to make any changes, if you want to make it final, simply you can copy it as image. If you want to make any changes, you can use the chart editor. Okay, if you double click, if you double click, you can make a uh, chart editors here. You can make format, you can change the format, you can insert second options, footnote. Okay, the options we have it. There are options, are so many options are available with us. Okay, this is all about how to prepare scatter plot. Basically, we use scatter plot uh, when it comes to using uh, correlation. On a regression analysis, we have one of the important steps to check whether we have multilinear relationship or linear relationship, or positive relationship or negative relationship or no relation. Okay, this is all about it. Next, let's go back to our data set. We have completed knowledge score. Then, let's go to graphs, like see dialogs. There's an option called pie chart. This, uh, there is a new window, pie charts, summaries for groups of cases defined. Okay. Now here, you take, I'm taking gender. Okay. And if you want to give any titles, okay, just click on it, or just okay. You can see that uh, pie chart is here, but I want to make some changes here. Now, you know, to make changes, double click. Now here, once we double click, I can see a lot of options here. 
Okay, if you click on this particular option, you can make number format. You can use a lot of features of this particular. You can add title. And there are the respondents. And if you want to make any changes in color, you can make note. Okay, then close. Again, click on this particular option. We have a lot of options available. So all how we are going to make changes. Okay, chart size. Will you want to make any colors? Will you want to make any change? values, depth, whether you want to make any kind of format change, right? For example, I'm taking 3D. Let's see how it is going to reflect. What happened to this? So, I what? have a question. Yeah, yeah. May I ask? Please go. Yeah, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Okay, so uh, as you said, like scattered plotting we do for regression analysis and more of the correlation, right? So mm -hmm. uh, when do we use the pie chart mostly? Like uh, as per my knowledge, uh, we mostly use it for like demographic representation or uh, some like gender representation you're showing right now. We, so, for example, uh, in data set, we have four types of uh, data, nominal data, ordinal data, interval data, and ratio data. Okay. Yes. Now, nominal data and ordinal data is known as categorical data. Categorical and data. Categorical data. Okay, sir. And it is also known as qualitative data. Okay. Qualitative data, yes, sir. Yeah. Secondly, when it comes to interval and ratio data, it is known yes, as quantitative data. It is known as metric data. Okay. Now, metric data. Metric, metric. Okay. It is also known as scale. For example, if you look at the spaces, it will consider as measurement as a scale. Scale. Okay. So what it is called, sir? What data? Interval and ratio. <coughs> interval oh. and ratio. Interval and ratio. Interval, it will consider, interval and ratio. It will consider as a sure. scale. Okay. Whereas okay, normal sir. and uh, ordinal, we generally used to call it a qualitative data. Okay. okay. Or okay, categorical data. Yes, sir. Now, when it comes to, we have data like uh, categorical data, nominal data, ordinal data. You can use pie chart. Okay. 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 And you can use a bar chart. Okay. Okay. And you can use this. We can use within the column bar also we have it, columns. Within the bar chart we also have column. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, when it comes to bar chart, for example, if you are looking at it, uh, agenda, you can create bar chart. You can use it. Okay. Yeah. And if you are looking at uh, gender and ICT skill set, you're trying to look at two categories, you can be able to do that. Yes. For example, histogram, I'm looking at the age of the respondent or height of the respondent, weight of the respondents. Okay. For example, in tomorrow class, we are going to talk about how your data is distributed, whether it is normally distributed, whether it is what not data is all about it. So in that case, we are going to use histogram one variable, it shows how Data is distributed. What kind of shape you got? It. Well, you got bell shape. How data is distributed? Whereas when it comes to a uh, box plot, it helps us to understand how what kind of median. For example, when you talk about median, five point summary, like we are talking about first quartile, second quartile, third quartile. Okay. Starting with statistical testing, I'm sure uh, many of you have some kind of apprehension about what is the right data. What is the right data? Now, it's all about uh, what kind of data you have it, what kind of uh, statistical technique that you are going to use it. This all depends on the kind of understanding about data that we have with you. Okay. Now, in this particular session, and in order to understand how to choose the right statistical test, I'm going to cover about different levels of measurement because we are going to identify what are the different terms we have, what are the different uh, variables we have, and hypothetical testing procedure how one can conduct the testing procedure, how one can conduct hypothesis test, 
and what are the different assumptions we have it what are the different basic uh, statistical tests are available okay like a comparison test correlation test regression test what is meant by each and every test is all about it now when i talk about levels of measurement before understanding the levels of measurement if you look at a previous class we have used some raw data that is peer of computers and peer of statistics right we have used we have entered this full data and we also calculated uh, frequencies chart preparation okay now i'm using same data to understand different levels of measurement or you can take even any other examples as well if you look at this particular two uh, raw data the particular survey we have 1 to 10 like a scale statement then we have gender then we have age then we have skill take any research tool what are we are preparing this particular tool consists of four different variables one is nominal data second one is ordinal data third one is interval data and ratio data as you all know that i'm sure all of you might be knowing what this particular this concept is all about it i'm sure uh, many of you know about it so i'll like briefly i'm going to touch top on it nominal data is nothing but you are trying to classify your data on the basis of specific classifications specific labels name it region category okay and marital status like gender ethnicity different categories that we have it similarly when it comes to ordinal data we are going to order the data in the form of particular level particular for example high low medium tall height a uh, ranking order first rank second rank third rank for example if you look at some of your uh, mark list a grade b grade, b grade c grade okay now wherever you are putting it your data in the form of odd ranking or order this known as ordinal data interval data basically use it where we have specific intervals or where you can able to calculate the distance between one particular level to another particular level okay and as i mentioned yesterday nominal data ordinal data is known as categorical data is known as qualitative data whereas when it comes to interval and ratio it is known as quantitative data some people call it as metric data okay but when it comes to ratio we have examples like high weight so these are some of the examples we have with and even as of comparing the same hello please and show that your mic is on mute okay now just uh, with the help of some of the google images i just brought uh, some of the scholars work okay they have nicely explained the concept of what is nominal data with the help of the example nominal data derives variables into mutually exclusive labeled categories mr jay shakti can you mute yourself bye i'm going to take care of the we can see the examples here for example eye color in eye color we have blue brown green you are categorizing your data in the form of certain labels specific categories smartphone depends on the type of the company right transport bus train car so these are all considered as nominal data now when it comes to looking at uh, statistics what kind of statistics one has to conduct for example if you have nominal data you cannot conduct mean median okay only you can able to conduct only mode that is frequency distribution you can conduct it and you, and you can also do it non parametric test basically you are going to do it non parametric statistical test here okay but when it comes to ordinal data you are hanging wherever data is organized in the form of order ranking like for example a b c this can be grades next we have bachelor degree master degree phd doctorate okay this is educational level for example we have also a professor associate professor assistant professor you know like manager depends on position ranking this is all known as ordinal data seniority level junior mid mid senior okay. now whereas when it comes to uh yeah, examples like for this particular kind of data we can use frequency distribution mode median range when it comes to non parametric test we will have a man with me u test and wilson sign test we are going to use it okay and logistic uh, regression test we are going to use for this particular kind of data we have next we have interval data interval data is measured along with numerical scale that has equal intervals between existing values take for example temperature is one example which we already discussed iq score for example if you want to conduct as to iq score among higher education students okay income range between particular range wherever you are putting this kind of range you know it's going to be interval data whenever we have interval and ratio data most of the parametric tests if your data is not violated if your data is normal distributed you 
you can use a parametric test. When I talk about parametric test, we have I'm going to talk about it in the third session. That is <clears throat> am I very speed? Uh, how is my voice? Am I going very fast? Sir, please be a bit slow. Okay. Yeah. Next, uh, as I mentioned earlier, when it comes to using parametric statistics, we need all need interval data as well as ratio data. If you have ratio and interval data, you can conduct all types of parametric tests. Now, coming to the statistical testing of hypothesis, there are five important steps one has to follow. First one, stating the null and the alternative hypothesis. May know anyone uh, what is null hypothesis? Anyone of you? How to frame hypothesis? Hypothesis states that there is no relationship between two variables. Okay. What about alternative hypothesis? Alternative hypothesis says that there must be some relationship between the two variables. Okay. And we are going to test your null hypothesis and you are going to see whether you are based on the significant level, that p value, based on the significance level, whatever you are going to keep it 5%, 0.001%, right? Based on that, you are going to put it whether you are going to test whether uh, null hypothesis is injected. Okay. Now I'm going to show you with the help of the example in coming session, and we are going to identify the statistic test. Depends on the test that we are using on it, whether t-test, ANOVA, right? We are going to identify certain critical values, and we are going to check it with the help of the data what this particular test value is all about it, and you are going to formulate a decision. So based on the p-value and the statistic uh, data value, you are going to take the decision, or you are going to accept the null hypothesis, or so you are going to reject the null hypothesis, or or fail to reject the null hypothesis, and you are going to finally take the decisions all about it. Okay. Now, in this particular as a part of the testing of procedures, let me take an example instead of discussing the theoretical part. This is a hypothesis like there is no difference in mean pre and post marks of teaching intervention. Now, one of the teacher she attended one training program because uh, she felt that uh, there is some kind of difference in her teaching and. Uh, she felt that uh, there are some not getting good grades among the students' point of view. So she went for some training program and she adopted that particular teaching intervention in her classroom. And she wanted to test it before the intervention, after the intervention, was there any difference? Now, she framed hypothesis. This is a pay, basically a sample t test. There is no difference in mean pre and post marks of teaching intervention. There is null hypothesis. Whereas when it comes to alternative hypothesis, there is a difference in mean and pre and post marks of teaching intervention. I hope you understood uh, what the context is all about it. Now, next one is selecting a level of significance. Now, there are uh, three different levels one can choose significance level point of view. One is 0 0.05, second one 0 0.001, and point zero zero one. Okay, now there are, as we have, basically most of us will choose 0 0.05 as a main significance level, that is 95 percent confidence interval, we're going to choose in order to choose whether you are going to accept, you are going to reject your null hypothesis or you are paying to reject your null hypothesis. Now, when it comes to statistic test, there are different kinds of tests are available. As I mentioned at the earlier stage, we have compare means, comparison test. For example, if you want to compare difference between particular teaching intervention to another teaching intervention. Okay, or uh, if, for example, if I want to see the difference between gender and uh, participation in sports. Okay, or if I want to see uh, more than two categories. For example, as IBM Spaces wanted to give some uh, gift vouchers. Okay, subscription, those who are subscribing their uh, package, they want to give some kind of gift. So they started offering three important, uh, three types of gifts. One is Quick wheel software, antivirus software, second one, pen drive, third one is headphones. Now I want to understand based on the gender. Okay, what kind of test one can do that? Okay. Now similarly, there are so many other tests when it comes to regression. We have, for example, I have sent you just now one video. I want to understand whether the person who is having knowledge about calcium 
and its impact on the calcium intake. Okay. Similarly, I can also see co correlation. I can also see association. So when I talk about uh, association, basically we'll use chi square test. And when you talk about relation, we'll use relation and correlation. If your data is normally distributed, we'll use PSN correlation. If your data is not normally distributed, we are going to use Spearman uh, correlation test. And similarly, when it comes to regression, if we have one dependent variable, one independent variable, we are going to use simple linear regression. If you have more than one independent variable, you are going to use multilinear regression. In case, if you have ordinal data, we are going to use logistic uh, regression model. So there are different models which I'm going to show you all. But what I want to tell you that there are comparison based tests. We have relationship based test, association based test and relation. Sorry. Association comparison and we have relation based test. We have these are the three important tests. One can use it. Now, the formulated addition rule. This is outcome of STSS, what we have conducted it. And we are going to do the same exercise when you are going to talk about paying sample t-test. Okay. Now, based on the test result, we are going to take whether or accepting your rejecting your null hypothesis or fail to reject your null hypothesis. Okay. Don't go into details about the result. I'm not discussing about the particular test. Okay. I want to show you the help of the uh, theoretical part. I'm just showing this particular data to you. Okay. Based on the test, we are going to frame, uh, we are going to come up with a decision. And you're going to interpret the result. Okay. So this is all about our test procedure of hypothesis. Next one we have with us uh, missing data analysis. Okay. So this is another important uh, problem that we face. You know, uh, whoever it is, uh, generally it is a common problem for each one of us. Uh, it may be ten percent, maybe twenty percent. Uh, you know, sometimes you feel that some of the respondents are not answering many of your questions. Uh, for example, it may be related to age, it may be related to annual income, you know, it's not coming that always age and income, but these are basic questions. Many of us, we won't generally won't get response, 100% response. Uh, and how to handle that kind of data with us. Okay, there are different methods. Uh, there are traditional methods we have, there are some scientific methods we have. I'm going to follow one of the methods, scientific method that one can use it. Uh, I just listed out a couple of methods uh, like mean imputation. Okay, please look at my data that I have shared here. I just intentionally I'm deleting some data sets. Okay, you can you can also do that same thing. I'm deleting my data so that I want to show that there are some missing data in my data sheet. Randomly, you can do that. This is part of exercise. You can randomly delete around 10 to 15 as per your choice. Okay, then are you are you able to do that? Now there are certain missing there are certain missing values are there. Hello, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, um, in our variable view, we um, we give the values for um, a gender goals and satisfy uh, uh, and enjoy the liquor scales. And also that we can see in our uh, data view, like uh, we give gender made for one. Uh, that we can reflect in our data view. What, what do you want to reflect, sir? Male, male. Uh, sir, in your data, uh, the gender. Uh, that means uh, in in your data, I can see that one, two, one, one, two. Yes, 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 uh, yes. Uh, uh, that uh, that because of we give the values in our variable view. Yes, sir. This is where see this is the way we have given values. One indicates what, two indicates what. Okay. And when it comes uh, to sir, data, we chose. My question is that uh, in in my uh, when I doing that is not showing in my data view. Only male, male, female, male, female like that. You you are showing that it's not showing one two two one and two uh, one two. Uh, yes, uh, not showing like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as you can you see my cursor here near help under the help there is an option. Yes. Click please click on that button. Okay, okay, sorry. Now okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. You. Uh, yeah, it's fine. I think uh, we are dealing with missing values. There is, there are different methods. Now, some of the scholars says that you take the value of, uh, you take the mean value of the entire column, mean value of the entire column. For example, we have 15 respondents. 
roughly, roughly hypothetically, take that uh, mean age is 25. I'm saying that mean age is 25. So what I'm going to do is in this particular blank column, I'm going to keep mean 25. Mean age is 25. You got the point here? Whereas when it comes to course, mean, for example, let me go with the sir, data set. Uh, can, uh, sir, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Can you just repeat your sentence? It is, uh, it is having a very disturbance here. So can you just repeat your sentence? Uh, yes, man, I'll, what I'll do, I'll do with the help of statistics. Okay, so I'm going to analyze. I'm going to analyze. Descriptive statistics. I'm taking uh, age because in age there are missing values. Okay, like number five and number nine, I have missing values. So one of the methods says that first to get the mean of the this particular column. Mean, age, options. I got mean. Okay, you can also get it for the sake of example. You can get it. Okay. Uh, okay, now here <clears throat> mean is 20, mean age, average. I hope you, are, you know, right? Mean, what is that? Mean is all about it. We have a total 15 respondents. Out of 15 respondents, two people they haven't answered it. So I have data, missing data. Now, some of the method says that you calculate the mean of the entire respondents. For example, we have 15 respondents. You are, I'm calculating all the 15 respondents age. I'm taking the, for example, 15, 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus, up to 15, I'll put it, divided by number of respondents. I'll get the mean value. Now, mean value in this particular output, it is showing 20.7, 20, .7, 20 uh, 21. So what I'll do is in missing value, I'm going to put 21 is my data. This is one method. 